from Seattle, Washington, it's The Cube, covering AWS Imagine. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Seattle, Washington, downtown, right next to the convention center for the AWS Imagine EDU show. It's the second year of the show, put on by Andrew Coe and his crew, part of Teresa's public sector uh, group, really focused on education. Education means everything from K through 12, higher education, community college education, getting out of the military and retraining education. It's a, it's a really huge category. And it's everything from you know, getting the colleges to do a better job by being on cloud infrastructure, to innovating and really thinking outside the box. We're really excited to have the man who's doing a lot of the work on the curriculum development in the education. He's Ken Eisner, he's the director of Worldwide Education Programs for AWS Educate. Ken, great to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, nice shout out this morning by uh, Teresa. She said she just keeps asking you for more <laughs> and you keep delivering, so. Uh, you want to deliver <laughs> for Teresa Carlson. Yes, she, she is a dynamo and she drives us all. She does. So let's dive into it a little bit. So, you know, there was a, a great line that they played in the keynote with Andy um, talking about, you know, we cannot be protecting old institutions. We need to think about the kids. There's a story I, I hear all the time where if somebody came from a time machine from 1776 and landed yeah. here today, they wouldn't recognize how we talk, how we get around but they would recognize one thing, and unfortunately that's the schoolhouse down at the end of the block. So you guys are trying to change that. You're really trying to revolutionize what's happening in education. Give us a little bit of the background and some of the specific things that you're working on today. Yeah, I, I think Andy, one of the things that he mentioned at that time was that education is really in a crisis um, and we need to be inventing at a rapid rate. We need to show that invent and simplify inside education. Um, and he, he's incredibly, he's correct. We, the students are our customers and we've got to be changing things for them. What we've been really excited to see is that with this giant growth in cloud computing, uh, AWS yeah, it was the fastest IT vendor to ever hit $10 billion yearly run rate. We're now growing at a 42% or 41% year over year growth rate and $31 billion uh, yearly company. It's creating this giant cloud computing opportunity. Cloud computing's been the number one LinkedIn skill for the past four years in a row. And when we look at that software development to cloud architecture, to the data science and artificial intelligence and data analytics and cybersecurity roles, um, but we're not preparing kids for this market. Gallup ran a study that's, that showed um, about 11% of business executives thought that students were prepared for their jobs. It's not working, it's got to change, and the exciting thing that's happening right now is workforce development, governments are really pushing for change in education and it's starting to happen. Right, it's pretty amazing because we were here last year, the theme last year was very much around the community college releases and, and the certification of the associate programs and trial down in, in Southern California. And this year, I've been surprised, we've had two guests on where it's the state governor has pushed these initiatives, not at the district level, the city level, but from the state level, I think both Louisiana as well as Virginia. That's pretty amazing support to move in such a, an aggressive direction and really a new area. Yeah, I was I actually just uh, moderating a panel where we had uh, Virginia, L Louisiana, and California all sitting down and talking about that scaling statewide strategy. We had announcements from the entire CUNY and, and uh, SUNY, or City University of New York and State University of New York system, to do both two and four year programs in cloud computing. Um, and Louisiana announced it with their K-12 system, their community college system, and their uh, four-year with Governor uh, John Bell Edwards making the announcement two months ago. So right, we are seeing this scaling consortium of play where institutions are collaborating across themselves. They're collaborating vertically with your know, higher ed and K-12, and yeah, direct to the workforce because we need to be hiring people at such a rapid rate that we, we we need to be also putting a lot of skin in the game, and that's starting to happen. So, uh, again, I agree with Andy said, education is at a crisis, but now we're starting to see change makers inside of education making that move. Right, it's interesting, I wonder, you know, is it, 
is it, I don't want to say second tier, that's the wrong word, but it's kind of what I'm thinking. You know, kind of these other institutions, the, 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 the schools that don't necessarily have the super top end cachet, you know, who are forced to be innovative, right? We're number two, we try harder, as they used to say in the, in the Hertz commercial. Um, it's really a lot of creativity coming out of, again, the community colleges last year in LA, which I was, I was blown away. That you right. can kind of understand, because that's specifically to skill people up to get job. But now you're hearing it in much more kind of traditional institutions and doing really innovative things like the thing with the, the Marines, teaching active duty Marines about data science. Yeah. Who came up with that idea? That's yeah. phenomenal. Well, you know, data permeates everything. Right, it's right. not just in pure data science jobs and machine learning jobs. Those are brilliantly important. But it's also in marketing jobs and business jobs and so on. Data analytics, data intelligence, security, cybersecurity, so important that, you know, thank God you know, Northern Virginia Community College and U.S. Marine Corps are working, you know, for, to make these programs available to their veterans and active military. The other thing is they're sharing it with the rest of the student body. So that's, I think, another thing that's happening is this sharing, this ability, you know, all of, for this cloud degree program that AWS Educate is running, all of these institutions are sharing their curricula. So the stuff that was done in Los Angeles is being learned in Virginia, is be, the stuff that the U.S. Marine Corps is doing is being you know, available to students who are you know, not in military occupations. I think that collaboration mode is, is amazing. The, the thing that I'd say about community colleges and just this new locus of control for education um, and, and why it's changing, Community colleges, you're right, they're they're moving fast. These institutions have a bias for action. They know they have to you know, change the ROI, right? right. Which, it's about preparing students for this workforce, but they also serve as a flywheel to those four-year institutions, back to the 12 and to the, and to the workforce. And they hit you know, underserved audiences that the rest, so that you know, we're not all picking from the same crew. You cannot keep going to just your elite institutions and recruit, we have to grow that pipeline. So you know, thank, thank these places for moving quick right. and operating for their students. Right, right, and, they, and, and that's where the innovation happens, right? I mean, and, and that's, that's, uh, that, that's goodness. And the, and the other thing I thought was pretty interesting was, um, you know, obviously skilling people up to get jobs, you need to hire them, that's pretty, that's pretty obvious and simple. But really bringing kind of big data attitude, analytics attitude into the universities, across into Absolutely. the research departments and the, and the medical schools. And you think at first, well, of course, researchers are data centric, right? They've been doing it that way for a long time, but they haven't been doing it in kind of the modern big, big data, real time analytics, you know, yep streaming data, not sampling data, all the data. So so even bringing that type of point of view, I don't know, you know, mindset to the academic institutions outside of what they're doing for the students. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. The uh, I mean, machine learning is really changing the game. This the notion of big data, the, the way that costs have gone down in terms of storing and utilizing data, um, and right, it's streaming data, it's non-columnar data as opposed to you know, the the old you know, pure SQL setup. Right. Um, that that is a game changer. No longer can you make just can you make a theory and test it out. Theories are coming, streaming by looking at that data and letting it do some work for you, which is you know, kind of that machine learning, artificial right. intelligence path. And it's all becoming democratized. So yes, researchers need to need, learn these new paths to, to, you know, to make sense and to leverage this you know, with that big data on the medical center side. There are you know, cures that can be dis discerned against some of our most pressing diseases by leveraging Leveraging data, right, so right. yeah, we got to change. And we, by the way, we got to change that mindset, not just yeah at the PhD level, but actually at the K twelve level. Right. You know, our kids learning the right skills to prepare them for you know this new big data world once they get into higher ed. Right. And then the last piece, which which again we've seen on the enterprise, you know, we've kind of seen the movie on the enterprise side in terms of. Of, of cloud adoption, what AWS has done is on, at, at first it's you know a, a better, more efficient way to run your infrastructure. It's you know there's a whole bunch of good things that come from from running a cloud infrastructure. 
But that's not. But that's not the answer, right? The answer to the question is the innovation, right? It's it's the speed of change, the speed of development, and some of the things that we're seeing here around the competitive nature of higher education, trying to appeal to the younger kids because you're competing for their time and attention and their and their dollar. Really interesting stuff with Alexa and some of these other Absolutely. you know kind of innovations, which is where the goodness really starts to pay off on a cloud investment. Yeah, with, without a doubt, Alexa. You know, we. AWS came up with RoboMaker and DeepRacer um, at our last reInvent. Um, and there's there's organizations at the K-12 level like First Robotics and Project Lead the Way that are doing really cool stuff by making this this relevant. It you know, education becomes more relevant when kids get to do hands-on stuff. AWS lowers the price for failure, lowers the ability, you, you can just open a browser and do real world hands-on hands -on stuff. Robotics, you know, AR, VR, all of these things, again, are game changers inside the classroom, but you also have to connect it to jobs at the, the end. Right. And if you know, educational institutions can become more relevant to, to their students in terms of preparing them for jobs like they've done in Santa Monica College and the, like they're doing in Northern Virginia Community College and across the state of Louisiana. Um, and by may putting the real world stuff in the hands of their, their kids, they will then start to attract you know, students. We saw this happen in Santa Monica. They opened up one class, a uh, classroom of 35 students. That sold out in a day. They opened another cohort of 35, sold out in another day or two. They then went from 70 students last year, about 325. They opened up this California Cloud Workforce project where they now have eight 125 students out of five campuses. These, uh, Northern Virginia Community College, their, their cloud associate degree that they ran in tandem with AWS Educate grew from you know, 30 students at the start of the year to well over 100 now. These programs will drive students to them, right, and it, the students will keep, get a job at the end. Right, right. Well, and can and can the school support the demand? I mean, that's that's the problem we see with CS, right? Everybody yeah. says, "Tell your kids to take CS." They want to take CS. Guess what? There's no sections open in yeah. CS. So you know, thinking of it in a different way, a little bit more innovative way, providing that infrastructure kind of ready to go in a cloud-based way. Now we'll will hopefully enable them to get more kids and really fulfill the demand. Absolutely. There's another thing with professional development that I think you're hitting on. So we definitely have a shortage in terms of teachers who are capable to teach about software development and cloud architecture and data sciences and cybersecurity. Um, so we're putting, AWS Educate is putting a specific focus on professional development. We also want to bring Amazonians and our customers and partners you know, into the classroom to help with that because the work-based learning and the focus on subject matter expert, experts is also important. But we really need to have you know, programs, both from industry as well as government, to help support you know, new teachers coming into this field and in-service training for existing teachers to make sure, because yes, we launch those programs and students will come. We have to make sure that we're adequately preparing um, you know, teachers to tap. Because it's not, it's not, it's not easy. Right. Um, but again, we're seeing whether it's Coda Cole out of you know, out of. Um, uh, you know, Roosevelt High School, or you know, the people that we're working with out of George Mason University, and so on, we're seeing such an appetite for making change for their students, and so they're putting in those extra hours, they're getting the, that AWS certification, and they're getting you know, stronger prepared to teach inside the classroom. It's amazing, because right, teachers have so many uh, conflicting uh, draws on their time, many of which have nothing to do with teaching, right? Yeah. Whether it's regulations, and there's just so many things that teachers have to deal with. So, you know, the fact that they're encouraged, the fact that they want to, to spend and invest in this is really a good sign and, and really a nice, you know, kind of indicator to you and the team that, you know, you guys are hitting something really, really positive there. Yeah, I, I think we've hit, you know, we could, it's, this FOMO, fear of missing out, you know, opportunity. There's the excitement of the cloud. There's the excitement of watching your kids 
you know, really transform their lives. And it could be you know, Alfredo Colon, who came over from Puerto Rico um, after Hurricane Maria, yeah, wiped out his economic potential and started taking AWS Educate and you know, learning you know, some of these pathways and then landing a job yeah, as a DevOps engineer. When you see the, the transformation in your students, no matter what their background is, um, it is you know, it is a game changer. This has got to be, you know, listen, I, I loved watching that women's team win, uh, win the World Cup and that the, the excitement. Um, cloud is like, yeah, the new sport. Robotics is the new sport for these kids to help bring them on pathways to careers. Right. Well, thanks for uh, for taking a few minutes. Can the passion comes through? Andrew Coe's a big passion guy, and we know Teresa is as well. So it, it shines through, and keep doing good work. Uh, thank you so much for the time. All right. He's Ken. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're in downtown Seattle at AWS Imagine Edu. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.